Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at how Rutherford worked out the structure of the atom. People originally thought that atoms were like plum puddings, with this large positive sphere with electrons randomly dotted all over them. So named the plum pudding model because it looks like a plum pudding or a Christmas pudding. But this is not, as we know now, what atoms actually look like. So in 1914, a guy called Rutherford decided to have a look at this and see if he could prove or disprove the theory. He took a very thin sheet of gold foil and fired an alpha particle gun at it. Now, what you would expect if it was a plum pudding model is that all of the alpha particles would just come straight back. Because just remember, alpha particles have four mass and two um, atomic number. So that is four neutrons and two protons, but no electrons. So alpha particles actually have a positive charge. Now, you would expect that they would just all come straight back. If the plum pudding model was correct and that there was a positive charge all over the place. What they actually found is that most of them went straight through. Now this is quite weird because well, this is not what they were expecting. And then occasionally you'd get a few that were a little bit deflected. And then every so often you'd get one that would come straight back. Now this led Rutherford to introducing the nuclear model where we have a positive bit in the middle. Now this positive bit in the middle would allow most of the alpha particles to go straight through because there was nothing positive there to stop them. Some of them to be deflected a little bit as they got a little bit close to the nucleus and then very occasionally some of them to come straight back. And this is the model that Rutherford came up with, that there was a positive middle and a negative surrounding. Now, you know that nuclear models, the structure of the atom, are a lot more complicated than this, but this is as much as you need to know about Rutherford for GCSE. I've included um, a video from my advanced chemistry channel, which goes into this in a lot more detail if you're interested. Here we're going to be talking about the different models of the atom that have gone throughout history. So atomic models have a really, really long history, starting off in ancient Greece, going through to now and to the future. So we're going to be looking at Dalton, Thompson's models, Rutherford models, and then moving on to Niels Bohr's models. So starting off in ancient Greece, the word atom in ancient Greek means uncuttable. So when Dalton was developing his model, he thought that atom was a solid ball. This is also sometimes described as the um, billiard ball model. Um, Dalton thought this was the smallest thing possible, so he called it an atom because he didn't believe it could be cut into anything smaller. In 1897, J.J. Thompson did a number of experiments where he found that there were bits inside of the atom and he showed that these bits had a negative charge and he calls these corpuscles. We now know these as electrons and he described that corpuscles were evenly distributed um, in a large positively charged sphere and this is what we commonly know today as the, pl the plum pudding model. Moving on to 1909 and Ernest Rutherford. Two uh, young experimenters in, in his lab, Hans Geiger and Ernst Marsden, did an experiment. Um, and you may think it's slightly unfair that Rutherford is more commonly known for this, even though he did the experiments. But you need to think about um, or remember the way the peer review is done. I'll do, uh, I'll do a video on this to explain it properly. But Rutherford's the one that's known for this, even though he didn't actually do the experiments. Now, the experiment that Geiger and Marsden did was the gold foil experiment. They fired alpha particles 
which you have to remember are helium nuclei without electrons, so they have a positive charge. They fired them very quickly out of a gun through a very thin sheet of gold. Now the hypothesis, if Thompson's model was correct, and the gold foil would, ha gold foil would have a positive charge all over it, the alpha particles would be slightly deflected all over the place, so that all of the alpha particles would behave in the same way. When they did the experiment, what they found is a large number went straight through, which was very curious if you were expecting um, the sheet to be evenly distributed. A few of them were um, partially deflected, and then a very, very few of them came straight back. So this was completely the opposite to what they were actually expecting to happen. So the new model that they came up with is of an atom which has a positive charge in the middle and then a lot of empty space around it which is filled by electrons. Now this would work with the alpha particles because when there was just electrons they would pass straight through. When they came close to the nucleus they would be deflected and then when they hit the nucleus bang on they would be fully deflected. And since most of them went straight through, we can say that most of the atom is made up of a positive charge and a few alpha particles are going to get deflected and the very, very rare ones that hit bang on are going to be fully deflected straight back again. There were a few additional modifications to Rutherford Rutherford's models mostly discovered that the charge in the part in charge of the nucleus went up by one. And Rutherford then discovered protons. These these are the charged positive bits in the nucleus. So this explained the change in the charge, the charge going up by one, but it didn't explain the change in mass, which confused people for a while until James Chadwick eventually discovered neutrons. Now, Niels Bohr, he also worked with Rutherford at the University of Manchester, um, and his model is the one that you're very, very familiar with, the one that you learned at GCSE, whereas we have the nucleus in the middle and these electrons in shells around the outside, and this model is based upon a few rules. The electrons live in fixed orbitals, and they do not go anywhere in between. They're very, very fixed in their positions um, and there's no um, like sway or give on where they can be. That each shell has a very fixed and definite energy. And then when electrons move between these shells, radiation is either emitted or absorbed. And because energy has a fixed shells, when electrons move between these shells, energy is emitted absorbed, the radiation emitted absorbed will have a fixed frequency, so we'll be able to work out which shells they're moving in between. So this model fits really well with the known experiments because we have the data for um, radiation, light, that is emitted from um, from atoms. So when they move down levels, light is emitted, and when light is absorbed, they move up energy levels. This is where your GCSE stops, and I'm afraid to tell you this is wrong. But it's not wrong, it's just not a complete picture of everything you need to know. Things are a lot, lot more complicated than this. So this is the nuclear model of hydrogen. <clears throat> And I have to remember this is 3D, not 2D. We've always drawn it at 2D in GCSE. But um, this is not a circle going around. This is actually a whole sphere going around. And for GCSE and for Bohr's model to be correct, you would have this electron orbiting the nucleus at a fixed location, in a fixed radius, and it wouldn't be moving anywhere in between. Then we come across Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and Heisenberg is my absolute favourite scientist of all time because I absolutely love electrons. And Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that you can know the location, all the speed, and now momentum because my brother-in-law's sister and I put momentum in there, not speed. 
but you can never know both at the same time. So you can either know speed or you can know location, but you can't know both. So this brings us on to the quantum model of a hydrogen atom. And the only thing that we know is the likelihood of where an electron's going to be. So you can see from the dots that I'm drawing on that the likelihood of an um, electron appearing is in what we would know from Bohr's model as a shell. But every so often, they are going to do something a bit weird and appear in other locations. And I say every so often because it's not going to be very, very frequently, but there's nothing stopping an electron just randomly appearing wherever it wants to. Just because it's most likely to appear in what Boyle calls shells doesn't mean it won't appear in other places. So we've moved through a number of models from uh, Dalton to Thompson to Weatherford to Bohr and then onto the quantum model. Each model was the best fit given the current evidence. Now the Bohr's model is the one that we generally accept today and that is based on the best given current evidence. Now the future is all quantum physics. For GC, for A or chemistry, for even your chemistry degree, you don't have to know quantum physics, but that is going to be delving deeper and deeper into the future of the atom. We're going to be dividing protons, dividing electrons, dividing neutrons, quarks, gluons, leptons, really, really complicated stuff. Um, that for A level chemistry, for chemistry degree, you don't have to worry about, but people that, that like quantum physics are really, really obsessed about. And this is where my interest in physics and chemistry overlap, in the quantum, in the electrons, because I'm a little bit obsessed by electrons. Um, I really, really hope you found this video um, useful and interesting. Subscribe so you don't miss any more of my videos. Donate, um, please, so that I can buy more stuff to make more videos for you because I love making videos, but teachers get paid enough for. Share them so your friends can um, learn and improve their grades. Any requests, comments, questions or corrections you can notice, pop them in the comments below and I'll respond to them. Um, thank you for everyone that helped me make these videos and I hope you enjoyed it.